excuse me, no, no. <clears throat> All right, guys, it is another gray, gloomy day here in the end times in the shithole state of Texas. Imagine that, another gray, gloomy, depressing day. It is, uh, what the hell is it, Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, somewhere in there. So anyway, guys, uh, you know, I don't like to give a lot of press to this uh, little eco pussy over at this channel, this YouTube channel called Collapse Chronicles. I don't know if you've ever heard of this channel. But anyway, every once in a while, this dude, can't remember what his name is, uh, he comes up with a, a rant uh, that is, you know, hits a few of the points. But the guy is a pussy. He just won't fucking level with people. So apparently this dude over there uh, did a review of, uh, uh, of this goddamn vomit-inducing whatever uh, we will talk about called braiding sweetgrass. Braiding sweetgrass, whatever the hell sweet braided sweet grass is. I'm a little unclear. So this was written by this woman named Robin Wall Kimmerer. Robin Wall Kimmerer. Braiding sweet grass. Indigenous wisdom. Scientific knowledge. And the teaching of plants. So who is this woman? Robin Wall whatever her name is, is a mother. She's a breeder. She is a... I can't even read this because... Uh, I I anyway, what she is, since I since the, 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 the fucking clueless moron who did this, look, look at the color. They, they, <coughs> they, they put the, the, the same color type is on the background. I, I, I can't even, so I can't even tell you who this woman is. But what she is, she is a uh, professional, she is a professor of botany. I guess it's SUNY up there in Syracuse, New York. Not very far from Bugs in a Jar Farm. So she is an educated professor of botany. But she is also just happens to be a noble savage. So th this is an interesting, so, so she's writing this book. It's kind of a schizophrenic book. It's about 400 pages long. It, it's this schizophrenic book. Like, like half of it was written from this woman's left brain and half of it was written from her right brain. And she's trying to uh, reconcile the two sides of her brain, I guess. And so the end result is this absolute, uh, just this, this mishmash of uh, th this might be the, the, and I made it uh, somehow. It took me, it took me four months, guys. Somehow I suffered to the end of this. Uh, and end of this stuff. It, it, it is <clears throat> perhaps the single biggest mishmash of human-centric, hopium-soaked, apocalyptic, noble savage, limp dick lefty breeder horseshit I have ever read in my life. Now, is she a good writer? This woman, is, she is a fantastic writer. I am not saying anything about her writing. What this is, to mix metaphors, uh, this is a 400-page silk purse made out of a, out of a sow's ear. This is this woman, this excellent writer, spent 400 pages painting lipstick on a pig. Uh, now, I'm not saying the silk purse is not a beautiful silk purse. I am not saying it is that it's not a beautiful shade of lipstick. 
okay? But the woman, uh, I, I don't give a fuck uh, uh, about how beautiful her writing is to lead us down the rosy path to, uh, to try to prove her unadulterated horseshit thesis. Basically, her thesis, if I'm reading, if I understood this correctly, basically her thesis is that humans, humans at any time in our history since the first human arrived on this planet, that we are good for the planet. All right, that humans are good for the planet, and through this this term reciprocity, reciprocity, that humans reciprocate for all that we that this planet has given us over the last two hundred thousand years or so. That humans either they used to give back to Mother Earth what they took from her, I don't know, uh, or that we have the possibility of, of doing this. So anyway, uh, I'm going, uh, since uh, that little eco pussy kind of did this, we're, we're, we're going to go on kind of what that little eco pussy just talked about. So of course, we start out with the uh, creation story from her tribe. In the beginning, there was the sky world. She, meaning this human, this human out of nowhere, the, the, this human out of nowhere fell like a maple seed pirouetting on the autumn breeze. A column of light streamed from a hole in the sky world, uh-huh, marking her path where only darkness had been before. Mm. It took her a long time to fall in fear, or maybe uh, or maybe uh, hope. She clutched a bundle tightly in her hand. Hurtling downward, she saw only dark water below, but in that emptiness, in that emptiness, there were many eyes gazing up at that sudden shaft of light, they saw there a small object, a mere dust moat in the beam. As it grew closer, they could see that it was a woman, a human, arms outstretched, <coughs> long black hair <coughs> billowing as she spiraled toward them. The geese, the geese, nodded at one another, and rose together from the water in a wave of goose music. She felt the beat of their wings as they flew beneath to break her fall. Far from the only home she had ever known, she caught her breath at the warm embrace of feathers as they gently carried her downward. And so it began. Yes, it did begin. The geese could not hold the woman above the water for much longer, so they called a council to decide what to do. What do we do with this strange thing falling out of the sky, fucking up our day? Resting on their wings, she saw them all gather. Loons, otters, swans, beavers, fish of all kinds. A great turtle floated in their midst and offered his back for her to rest upon. Gratefully, she stepped from the goose wings onto the dome of his shell. The others understood that she needed the under, the others understood that she needed land for her home and discussed how they might serve her need. The deep divers among them had heard of mud at the bottom of the water and agreed to go find some. Loon dove first, but the distance was too far and after a long while he surfaced with nothing to show for his efforts. One by one, the other animals offered 
to help. Hmm, otter, beaver, sturgeon. But the depth, the darkness, and the pressure were too great for even the strongest of swimmers. They returned gasping of air with their heads ringing. Some did not return at all. Yes. Soon only little muskrat was left. The weakest diver of all, he volunteered to go while the others looked on doubtfully. His small legs flailed as he worked his way downward and he was gone a very long time. <clears throat> they waited and waited for him to return, fearing the worst for their relative, and before long a stream of bubbles rose with the small, limp body of the muskrat. Mm. He had given his life to aid this helpless human, but then the others noticed that his paw was tightly clenched, and when they opened it, there was a small handful of mud. Turtle said, here, put it on my back, and I will hold it. Sky Woman bent and spread the mud with her hands across the shell of the turtle. Moved by the extraordinary gift of the animals, she sang in thanksgiving and then began to dance. She began to dance, her feet caressing the earth. The land grew and grew as she danced her thanks from the dab of mud on Turtle's back until the whole earth was made, not by Sky Woman alone, but from the alchemy of all the animals' gifts coupled with her deep gratitude. Together, they formed what we know today as Turtle Island, our home. So let's break this down, guys. So uh, here we have all of these obviously wetland animals going about their fucking business for millions of years, shall we say? Millions of years, and out of fucking nowhere, a, a goddamn human falls out of the sky, and what does every animal living this nice, unmolested, peaceful, in harmony, balanced life uh, in, in this wetland do, everyone stops what they're doing to go help out th this fucking space alien falling into the middle of them. This is the most human-centric, uh, well, I, I mean, it's right up there with, with the go forth and multiply and, and have dominion uh, over all the other animals. Uh, this human-centric uh, primacy of humans uh, bullshit that the whole fucking world is supposed to stop when a goddamn human uh, needs something. And, 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 you know, what, what is the first thing this bitch does when, when she gets here? She starts draining the wetlands. Every one of those species uh, talking about uh, is, is completely fucked. Uh, and, and from the first human, what, what we have done is we are the biggest direct threat to every single one of those animals. You know, why would a fucking muskrat, why would a fucking muskrat sit there and commit suicide to help a fucking human drain his home? It, the whole thing... It, 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 it's fucking unadulterated horseshit. Uh, and and, and it, uh, imagine if a group of humans were sitting around, okay? Uh, so, so instead of a group of animals sitting around and having, uh, imagine a group of fucking humans were sitting around on a nice day minding their own business and, and a fucking goose fell out of the sky. Where the fuck do you think that goose would end up? He would end up in the fucking stew pot is where he would end up. You know, and, and, and then the, 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 this whole shit 
uh, you, you know about uh, this Native American noble savage shit uh, about dancing and gratitude. Uh, you know that we are reciprocating. Uh, that that humans are reciprocating. Uh, giving back to this planet what, what we have fucking stolen uh, from this planet for the past 200,000 years that we, we, we fucking dance, that we get around uh, with a bunch of our little humans and, and, and we fucking dance gratitude. Maybe we, uh, maybe she's always talking about tobacco. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we, we sprinkle some fucking tobacco, or I, I guess there's pour some coffee grinds, you know, this whole Pachamama thing that, I, this bullshit, uh, noble savage shit that I used to hear down there in Peru about always give Mother Earth a little, you know, before you drink 12 ounces of coffee, give Mother Earth uh, one swallow. Mother Earth doesn't give a flying fuck. Doesn't give a flying fuck uh, about your swallow of coffee, uh, about your drag off of a cigarette. She doesn't give a fuck. Cut the crap. Cut all this human-centric, uh, noble savage, uh, aren't humans great uh, crap? It, you know, it, it, it fucking makes me want to puke. Alright, and uh, so then she goes from there uh, and introduces her thesis. So now she is, so now this uh, uh, Native American woman, we will not use the S word, will not go using the S word to describe this woman, okay. Now she is a professor, back in her back in her botany classroom. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9:35 a.m., I am usually in a lecture hall at the university, expounding about botany and ecology. Huh? Trying, in short, to explain to my students how Sky Woman's gardens known by some as global ecosystems function. One otherwise unremarkable morning, <clears throat> I gave my students, I gave the students in my general ecology class a survey. Hmm. Among other things, they were asked to rate their understanding of the negative interactions between humans and the environment. Nearly every one of the 200 students said confidently that humans and nature are a bad mix. These were third-year students who had selected a career in environmental protection, so the response was, in a way, not very surprising. They were well schooled in the mechanics of climate change, toxins in the land and water, and the crisis of habitat loss. Later in the survey, they were asked to rate their knowledge of positive interaction between people and land. The median response was none. There is no positive relation between humans and land, otherwise known as global ecosystems. I was stunned. How is it possible that in 20 years of education, they cannot think of any, of any beneficial relationship between people and the environment? Perhaps, perhaps the negative examples they see with their own fucking eyes every day, brownfields, factory farms, suburban sprawl, truncated their ability to see some good between humans and the earth. As the land becomes impoverished, so too does the scope of their vision. When we talked about this after class, I realized 
they could not even imagine what beneficial relations between their species and others might look like. How can we begin to move toward ecological and cultural sustainability if we cannot even imagine what the path feels like if we can't imagine the generosity of geese. These students were not raised on the story of Sky Woman. Thank God for that. The story of Sky Woman. And, and this is pretty much, I don't give a fuck what the creation myth, what the goddamn Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Great Pumpkin story, every fucking one of them is about humans, how humans show up on the scene and every other earthling uh, that we share that was here before us and that we share the planet with, uh, that it, it, it's just supposed to stop everything they are doing and, 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 give, uh, and, and give themselves. Here is the... Uh, this, uh, well, god damn it, I guess I, uh, yeah, okay, this is later in the book, uh, she's, you know, doing this famous Thanksgiving, uh, prayer. I, I'm just going to read you one verse out of, uh, out of this Thanksgiving prayer. We turn our thoughts to all the fish life in the water. They were instructed to cleanse and purify the water. They also give themselves to us as food. We are grateful that they continue to do their duties. And we send to the fish our greetings and our thanks. Now... Our minds are one. Yes, why is it a fish's duty? Why is it a fucking fish's duty to give his life to feed a goddamn human? I think that, I think that uh, we've taken this, uh, the, the, it, it is a fish's duty to die to feed a fucking human. I think maybe we can go watch End of the Line or Sea Spiracy to see where that fucking logic has taken us and the fish and all life in the ocean. And uh, guys, you, you know that this is over 400 pages. Uh, I could. Uh, 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 what did I uh, mean to, uh, what did I mean to highlight here? Uh, oh yeah, so anyway, this whole fucking notion, uh, this whole fucking notion about about uh, reciprocity. This is the, the main theme of this book is uh, <coughs> about reciprocity and gratitude. Uh, so anyway, she is talking, she's, she's on, a, on a field trip with her students teaching them about all the ways cattails can help humans. Okay, this is uh, talking about her field trip. <clears throat> How can we ever reciprocate such a wealth of care? Knowing that she carries us, could we shoulder a burden for her? Me meaning Mother Earth. I, I'm mulling over how to ask this when one of my students edges in with a comment that mirrors my thoughts. Quote, I don't mean this to sound disrespectful or anything. I think it is great to ask the plants 
if we can take them and give them tobacco. But is that enough? We're taking an awful lot of stuff. We were pretending like we were shopping for cattails, right? But we just took all this stuff without paying for it. When you really think about it, we just shoplifted the swamp, close quote. And she is right. If cattails are the Walmart of the marsh, then the security alarms at the exits would be blaring at our canoes full of stolen merchandise. In a sense, unless we find a way to enter into reciprocity, we are walking away with goods for which we have not paid. I remind my students that the gift of tobacco, you know, which she keeps talking about, sprinkle if you're feeling guilty about being a human and you want to pass, and you want to pass, you, you want to uh, get your get out of jail free card for all of the fucking damage you have, uh, you have committed uh, since the day you were born and, and all of the collective guilt that you were carrying around for 300,000 years, you sprinkle some fucking tobacco or you pour a swallow of coffee onto Mother Earth. Hmm. I remind them that the gift of tobacco is not a material one but a spiritual gift, a means of conveying our highest regard. Yes, I have asked some elders about this over the years and heard a range of answers. One man said that gratitude is our only responsibility. There you go. Gratitude is our only responsibility. That's it. Thank you, planet. I really appreciate all you have done to me giving me this gas-sucking truck. Mm. One man said that gratitude is our only responsibility. He cautioned against the arrogance of thinking that we, meaning humans, have the capacity to give back to Mother Earth anything approaching what she gives us. So just don't bother even trying. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I honor the humility inherent in that perspective, and yet it seems to me we humans have gifts in addition to gratitude that we might offer in return. The philosophy of reciprocity is beautiful in the abstract, but the practical is harder. Do you think so? Now I do admit I did enjoy the best, uh, the, the best uh, chapter in here is called Wendigo or Wendigo Footprints, talking about another one of these uh, Native American myths, basically teaching a lesson in being greedy. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, so what she does throughout this book is, I, I mean, she is an apocaloptimist on steroids. Uh, you know, one of these hopium soaked apocalyptic. So you could take out the, the little bit of, uh, you know, Hollywood ending at the end. You know, so three quarters of the book, uh, she is a doomer chick, a, a, a damn good doomer chick. Like, hell yeah, so I, I keep, you know, I, I kept reading and reading, thinking, you know, this woman offering, you know, 300 pages, 350 pages of why we're so fucked, 
and, and giving every goddamn uh, reason to support her students' understanding that there is nothing uh, positive between humans and the land, and, and, and giving us 350 pages of arguments why humans need to go extinct. And, and then, uh, after she's proven this argument, you, you, you know, she reverts back, uh, you know, her professor, her botany, ecology, professor brain, uh, the left brain, goes back into la-la land and that this little uh, Native American uh, noble savage uh, human-centric breeder uh, shows back up and, and, and comes up with some happy horseshit uh, Hollywood ending uh, about how humans uh, are going to reciprocate. Uh, and then, of course, she goes off here at the very end on her anti doomer rant. She gives every re reason to be a doomer. And then, in the very, uh, you know, in the last act, she pulls out her anti doomer rant. <clears throat> Despair is paralysis. It robs us of agency. It blinds us to our own power and the power of the earth. Environmental despair is a poison every bit as destructive as the methylated mercury in the bottom of Onondaga Lake. But how can we submit to despair while the land is saying help. Restoration is a powerful antidote to despair. Restoration offers concrete means by which humans can once again enter into positive creative relationship with the more than human world meeting responsibilities that are simultaneously material and spiritual. So it, all of this crap about restoration, and, and guys, I am a big fan of restoration. Don't get me wrong, but what the fuck does she think we are restoring? We are restoring the damage that humans uh, that humans have done to the planet. If fucking Sky Woman had never fallen in uh, to that wetland, we would have we would not have to restore any wetlands for every acre uh, of destroyed habitat uh, that humans uh, restore to show reciprocity, we destroy a thousand, uh, ten thousand more. Uh, it, it, it's unadulterated horseshit. Uh, the, the whole uh, idea of restoration is another reason that humans need to go extinct. And of course, leading up to this, it is not enough to grieve. It is not enough to just stop doing bad things. That is her final thing. It's not enough to stop doing bad things. As a matter of fact, it is enough to stop doing bad things. Stop it! Stop doing bad things, mainly breeding, which is the worst thing that we can do. Stop it. There is one way that humans are going to stop doing bad things, and that is on an individual basis, we die. The day we die, we stop doing bad things. The day humanity goes extinct is the day humanity stops doing bad things. Uh, the, the, the first five minutes, the first fucking human appeared on this planet. Already, how many animals had she killed? How many wetlands was she draining? It's all Sky Woman's fault. 
and, and, and obviously the best way, a, a better way than to stop doing bad things is to never start doing bad things. There is one way that a human being will never start doing a bad thing and that is to never be born. Anyway, so of course, you know, she started off uh, with one, with, with one uh, noble savage, uh, with one noble savage uh, creation myth, and she ends with, uh, she, she closes with the creation myth of the Mayans. The Mayan Indian creation myth, it, it, it's hilarious. Uh, I love this, uh, you, you know, the corn people. So I, I'm a little unclear how God created people out of corn when it was humans who created corn. There was no... It, anyway, not counting that, I love this one. They, meaning the, uh, meaning the people, were fed on corn liquor and these were good people, so I guess the Mayans were the original hillbillies. I suggest you go watch the Whitakers on Soft White Underbelly. Yes, to see the good people. The final, uh, the final uh, line out of the Mayan creation myth, these people of corn are the ones who were respectful and grateful for the world that sustained them, and so they were the people who were sustained upon the earth. <laughs> there you go. The Mayans were the. <coughs> Apparently, this woman has never uh, has never heard of the collapse of the Mayan Empire. I don't know if you saw. I was it my last video from uh, Mexico and Playa del Carmen. <clears throat> the last view I had of a Mayan Indian was this, I, I think it was a little girl, but it could have been a grown woman. I mean, pretty much in a fetal position, curled up on the sidewalk, holding a plastic cup out, begging to all of these rich fucking clueless moron tourists uh, to put a fucking uh, 10 peso coin in her cup. Uh, good God, the Mayans are so fucked. Uh, I, I, I love how she closes braiding sweet grass, indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teaching of plants with the Mayan creation myth. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, that is my... Uh... Anyway, read it for yourself, but do not read this uh, on a full stomach. If you are a doomer with a brain, uh, read it uh, uh, with great caution. <clears throat> anyway, I have to go uh, burn a a sweet grass smudge to uh, get the uh, the human centric uh, noble savage apocalyptic breeder stink out of here. Maybe burning some sweet grass will help. Uh, me survive braiding sweet grass. Bye guys. Yes, little dog. You ready to go burn some sweet grass?